and attend Cassidy. Assuming for the scenario that Cassidy is the one you should not have killed, this was one of the dumbest things that William could have done. Or maybe he doesn't consider it a mistake, since the one you should not have killed after all is keeping him alive. They're doing it as a way to make him suffer though, so since it's potentially a mistake but could be considered a good thing depending on the angle, I'm going with the top spot for this one. Well, the first spot for this one. But even if he does consider that a good thing, or an absolute win, or if Cassidy doesn't end up being the one you should not have killed, killing those five kids that made up the missing children's incident that most likely ended with Cassidy was a mistake, since it causes basically everything else in his life to go downhill. And he does end up suffering extremely only because of that kill and the others. So if you don't want to count Cassidy as the mistake, count the missing children's incident as the mistake. And at nine, Charlotte. While yes, Charlotte may have been Afton's first true kill, causing his descent into madness, this is more so because of what she turns into. In the game, Charlotte ends up possessing the puppet, who then gives life to the other animatronics, which causes you to disassemble them and release their spirits, and then scare you into your spring bonnie suit that crushes you, and then starts your descent into further madness. But even discounting the game aspects of killing her, being a mistake, in both universes where William kills Charlotte, Henry comes after him for it, which results in what should be his death multiple times over. And not to mention how in the book specifically, unbeknownst to her, Charlie is an animatronic robot that was meant to replace Henry's daughter, and it's also revealed that the animatronic is also the baby animatronic that we know and love, who can switch between her forms at will. So yeah, in the book, Charlotte is also baby, who is also Elizabeth Afton. And it ain't the fun times. There's no doubting what you've achieved on a technical level. These are clearly state of the art. There are just certain design choices that were made for these robots that we don't fully understand. We were hoping you could shed some light on those. She can dance, she can sing. She's equipped with the built-in helium tank for inflating balloons right at her fingertips. She can take song requests. She can even dispense ice cream. With all due respect, those aren't the design choices we were curious about, Mr. Afton. This classic line of Afton being interrogated that plays the first time you open sister location is definitely showcasing this idiotic mistake. The cops know what these animatronics are capable of and were designed to do, so they instantly end up being even more suspicious of William and are going to be keeping a closer eye on him. Probably why he ends up dressing up in the spring bonnie suit to start killing, which ultimately screws him over. So yeah, designing the fun times as killbots was definitely a bad idea. And 7 Henry. Why did you think that killing Charlotte wouldn't have any consequences? Like, you killed your business partner's daughter, that's gonna be pretty obvious to him. Especially when he already suspected you were up to something, so he took extra care to protect his daughter, and she still died. That's a vengeful father if I have ever heard of one, and he hasn't even needed vengeance yet. So then, you know, he's after you, or seems like it, and you, you don't kill him next? Killing Henry could have done wonders for your criminal career. I mean, like, yeah, the cops are already suspicious, but as long as they can't find a body, you'll be clear again. If they won't put you away for five missing kids, they won't put you away for a missing father as well. Especially a jury who has to be convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that you are a killer. And without a body, there's no real forensic evidence. And again, they didn't put you away for the missing kids, so you just finally off Henry and then you'd be able to staze yourself or even a spring trap, alright? And then you don't get burned like three separate times, and Michael would still be alive. And at 6, hiding spot. How the absolute living hell did he not end up, like, how did he get away with this? How did he not get caught? The smell of rotting bodies would ruin the hell out of the actual atmosphere of the pizza place, because, you know, you're supposed to be trying to eat pizza. And the heat from the animatronics, like, the, the robotic parts of their body, would help to speed up the decomposition of the ki missing kids. And the animatronics are in front of all those other kids every single day. There's even reports about people complaining that the animatronics started leaking blood, mucus, and other bodily fluids, as well as, quote, smelling like death. If this was real life and William getting away with this wasn't important for the plot or the story of the overall games, he would have been caught for that instantly. <laughs> Like, oh, we never found the bodies of these kids that went missing at this pizza place. But now the animatronics at this pizza place are leaking blood and smell like death. They also sound like their like bones are being crushed when they move. So maybe we should uh maybe we should check these out. Let's get a let's get a warrant. Uh oh, look, turns out we found those missing kids. William Afton, you're under arrest for the murder of Gabriel, Susie, Jeremy, Cassidy, and Fritz. Boom. Oh, then they could probably throw on Charlie and a couple others on there, I'm sure. Like, boom. <laughs> Instantly. He gets caught. I don't get how this wasn't an open and shut case. Like, William is so goddamn stupid that he shouldn't have made it 
to the events of the first game. Like not even 1987. Or not even 1985, all right? It shouldn't have happened. His whole plan is a dumpster fire of bad ideas. Halfway through in at number five, Elizabeth. Speaking of mistakes, <laughs> let's talk about his daughter. <laughs> what about getting your own kid killed? That's what I mean. Like, I don't know how William thought that this was a good idea. Like, I feel like this guy just thought, like, how do I capture kids more efficiently? Oh, I know, I can make a robot to lure them in and then grab them when they're close. But like, hmm, what would its design be? Hmm. Hey honey, come here, daddy wants some design tips. And then Elizabeth ends up making the most predictable move ever and going directly against her father's instructions to see the robot that's basically perfect in her eyes. Like, William, why did you think that this was ever going to end well? Like, what did you think was going to happen? When has a kid ever listened to a parent? Especially at that age, when they're seemingly also loaded because you own a successful entertainment business. Spoiled rich kids listening to their dad when they say not to touch a giant robot made to appeal to them specifically. Yeah, genius f***ing idea, man. God, you're a real special kind of stupid, William, aren't you? Like, program a blacklist of kids not to steal, right? You have facial recognition tech, so come on. Just make a blacklist, like, don't kill my kids. Easy. God. And for Crying Child. I've had a ton of people complain to me about how Crying Child's death wasn't William's fault, since he didn't put Crying Child in Fredbear's mouth, and the spring locks failing were because he was crying. However, to me, there is no logical way that the animatronic jaw should have been able to crush his skull, okay? The spring locks were already active. Crushing his skull would require a lot of power to actually accomplish with just a normal opening and closing. Of, the, of an animatronic mouth. So the only way that Crying Child's skull could have been crushed was if Afton had intentionally supercharged the animatronic, which would make sense if you wanted to use it as a kill machine or a backup kill suit maybe if uh, Spring Trap or Spring Bonnie ever ended up shutting down. Figuring more power would help him out, which clearly it did, just in the worst way possible. There is no way that this was a spring lock failure either, okay? The Fredbear suit was already in animatronic mode, meaning that the spring lock mechanism used to keep the robot parts to the side of the suit so that someone could be in the suit weren't being used. The spring lock failure problem comes from when those mechanisms are put under the stress of keeping the parts away from the person in the suit. If it's in robot mode, the spring locks can't fail because they're not being used. Keep in mind that the term spring lock in this context is referring to the actual parts that move the robot bits away inside the suit, rather than just the suit as a whole, which is also referred to as a spring lock. Well, it's referred to as a spring lock suit, okay? If I was talking about the suit, I would say spring lock suit. Getting close to the end in number three, Princess Quest. The whole reason Princess Quest is a thing in, in Security Breach was to lock Vanny away and prevent her from regaining control of her body. So, why did William create or allow for the creation of a sort of failsafe that would let her escape? I mean, sure, they didn't expect a kid to come along and figure it out, maybe, but given the track record of this series, you'd think that Afton would have smartened up at a, after at least 40 years. But that's like having a self-destruct button on a bomb that you plan to use to wipe out the entire city, but you still want no one to stop you. Or like if the Flash had a steal my speed button on his suit that you could just like tap. It's just stupid. Like, if you want something to work, why give it a way to fail, you know? This is one of the dumbest things that William has done, and probably the third dumbest thing overall. And I'll talk about the, the most dumb in a, in a couple minutes, but seriously, what's the point behind a way to undo your evil plans? One of the absolute most ridiculous things in this story. Like, I get it, so that we can save her and have a good ending, but that ending isn't even canon, so we could have done without it. It's, it's just, it's one of the dumbest things known to, to man at this point. Like, William has the brain capacity of a toddler. But ultimately, in a number two, Springtrap. Being the genius behind some of the most advanced robotic technology in his universe, we expect a lot from William Afton. He's the suit technician, but he's also the main killer, so he should really know what he's doing, right? <laughs> no. Apparently not, since after discovering that the original five animatronics were possessed, he disassembled them to learn their secrets. This inadvertently released the spirits of his original five victims, however, causing William to panic, which is fairly reasonable since, firstly, 
they're freaking ghost kids, and also because they're ghost kids that he killed. So this absolute animatronic genius, the technician that handles the suit maintenance and has explained to every employee the proper procedure for the spring lock suits, including the spring body suit that he uses to kill, ends up climbing inside the suit in a panic, in an attempt to make himself feel more powerful and maybe to scare the ghost kids off. However, since he's so smart, he didn't notice the moisture of the room, the leaking ceiling, which ended up causing the spring locks that were active at this moment, since it was in suit mode, to fail. Which would have killed him had he not been possessed by the one you should not have killed. Ironic. And finally, in a number one, location, location, location. The biggest mistake William has ever made, and I will stand by this till the day I die, was the fact that he killed people in his establishment. Okay. It's unknown if this was always his intention, but come on, who the absolute hell thinks that this is a good idea? Who in the comments wants to justify killing your prime demographic in your place of business? Dealers don't kill their best customers, right? Because it's bad for business. So why would William think it's a good idea? Literally, go anywhere else. This is like basically killing someone in your house. Okay, it's putting unwanted and unneeded scrutiny on everything you do. You even end up getting banned from going back in there while the investigation is underway. And it's not like it helped your business. You had to close the first location, resulting in you having to open another location called Circus Babies that ended up killing your daughter. So I think that this mistake is the one that caused every other mistake in the series. All you had to do was kill someone at the park. <laughs> If you killed someone at the park instead, your kids would be alive. You'd be harder to suspect, and then you'd also be rich from your business. And that's why William is a dumbass. Location. The location of the various crimes does actually factor into its effectiveness, believe it or not. The idea that William was killing in his own Fazbear restaurants is a ridiculous concept that in reality should have gotten him sent to prison. The saying is something along the lines of like, don't crap where you eat, which some take literally, others take as don't date people you see on a regular basis, and in this scenario I suggest that it should mean don't kill people where you're seen on a regular basis or, you know, constantly because it's your own business. Especially if it's the business that, like, targets kids. And while yes, this, this doesn't instantly make you guilty, but um, come on, the first thing that anyone would do in this situation, not even a cop, would be question everyone who was working when whatever had happened, happened, or whoever it was disappeared. And let's be realistic, an incident the likes of the missing children's incident from 1985 would ruin a business permanently. None of this somehow they stay open bull because in the real world they would end up closing permanently because no parent would want to go to a place where five kids went missing, especially when no bodies were found, which could maybe help them, but it certainly wouldn't help much. If Afton had any competitors, any at all, right? Even this world's version of Chuck E. Cheese, Afton should have gone there if he had any competitors, or literally anywhere else would have made more sense. However, he chose to kill where he eats, and that's probably one of the worst decisions that he could have made. Well, the, aside from, you know, the killing in the first place. Animatronics. While the animatronics are an entirely other mistake, this time around I want to talk about how stupid it was to hide the bodies in the animatronics. Like, how the f***? Did he end up getting away with this? The smell of rotting bodies would already ruin the place, especially when its focus is eating pizza. The heat from the animatronics animatronic insides would speed up decomposition, and the animatronics are in front of people every single day. They even started complaining that they were leaking blood and mucus, as well as smelling like death. If this was real, and William getting away with it wasn't important for the plot, he would have been caught instantly. Oh, we never found the bodies of these kids, but now these animatronics are leaking blood and smell like death. Hell, they even make bone crushing sounds when they move. We should probably check this out. Oh look, turns out we found those missing kids. William Afton, you're under arrest for the murder of Cassidy, Fritz, Jeremy, Gabriel, Susie. Boom! Instantly! I don't know how this wasn't an open and shut case. 
straight up, William was so goddamn stupid that he shouldn't have made it to the first game. Not to mention how stupid he was by building the fun time animatronics with these item containment chambers as he was calling it. Since the cops ended up questioning him about why he made those design choices in the sister location opening scene. Plus, he super powered the jaw of Fredbear from Fredbear's family diner to end up giving it a jaw that accidentally killed his son. Absolute moron. William, not the son. It wasn't his fault that he got his head shoved in there. If he had put it in there himself, it would have been his fault, but he didn't. Enemies. Now, while William did choose a set of easy marks, since, you know, kids can't really defend themselves against a dude in a part animatronic furry suit, but he he's a moron for exclusively killing that demographic only. I don't know why he did that. Sure, it's easier on him, especially when he's fully combined with an animatronic, but Henry serves as the opposition to William, and the reason William ends up burning multiple times. It's not Henry's fault that he turned into Springtrap, but it's certainly his fault that he turned into Scrap Trap, since this is most likely due to the FNAF 3 fire, and the FNAF 6 fire turned him into Burn Trap. So Henry has definitely been a pain in William's side for ages. Killing Henry would have resulted in nobody being able to chase William, basically. Like Michael might have figured it out, but he wouldn't really be in a position to do anything without Henry. Henry gave him the FNAF 3 job, probably, and definitely gave him the FNAF 6 job. So if William had just offed Henry after offing his daughter, he would have had a much easier time. At least, I'd think so. That's why every comic villain wants to kill the hero, right? Because if they do, they'll have a much easier time committing all their very crimes. So how is this any different? It shouldn't be. William is an absolute buffoon for not killing Henry when he had the chance. I'm sure it was Henry reporting him to the cops, like, you killed this man's daughter. Of course he's gonna have some form of vendetta against your ass. He's coming for blood and he actively tries to kill you multiple times. That's not something that you should have just ignored. You should have just killed Henry after his daughter. Because honestly, it makes sense. Then you kill his wife or the mother of Charlotte, as long as she's in the picture, knows about it, and actually cares, because sometimes they don't. But mom's gonna go after anyone who wronged their child, okay? Oh, that's something to witness, I'm telling you. Even my mom is vicious as hell, and she's like the sweetest woman in the world. So, you, you just get rid of the family, all right? Especially when it's your business partner. God, you're stupid. And while William may never have been caught for these acts, that's simply because he couldn't get caught or the plot would make no sense. So ultimately, the game had to find an excuse for his ridiculous behavior. But William could have done wonders if he had just been slightly more intelligent and maybe actually thought about things. Killing kids in your own pizzeria is horrible for business, so do that somewhere else, okay? If he had, he wouldn't have hid the bodies in the animatronics, which would have prevented the kids from attaching their souls to the animatronics that they were stuffed into. Thus, William wouldn't have had to disassemble assemble them, which accidentally released their souls, causing him to hide in his spring trap suit. The spring body suit would have failed without him inside, thus preventing spring trap from being created. And William wouldn't have been sealed behind a wall for 30 years. During those 30 years, he'd still be possessed by the one you should not have killed, since they didn't latch onto an animatronic in the first place, they latched onto him. And he'd be unable to properly die still, but he'd have an extra 30 years to work on bringing his kid back to life. He wouldn't have needed to send Michael to get baby from Afton Robotics' storage facility, and Michael would have ended up fine. Fazbear Frights wouldn't have opened, resulting in the place never burning down, and the FNAF 6 game wouldn't have needed to take place. There would have been no need to repair the company image in FNAF VR. William would have been probably a millionaire, and he could have used that money to study ways to bring his son back perhaps discovering Remnant along the way, similar to how Henry created the Ella doll in the novels. William could have poured his grief into something, watched it become possessed, and then worked on recreating that in a robot version of his dead children. If his children even died anyway. Since Fazbear's wouldn't have closed, he wouldn't have needed to open Circus Babies, resulting in Elizabeth staying alive. 
and since Crying Child wouldn't have seen her get scooped, he wouldn't fear the animatronics. Thus, Michael not needing to put his head in the Fredbear mouth because he thought it was funny, because he, his brother was scared. His brother wouldn't have been scared, so Michael wouldn't have needed to do that. William also just wouldn't have supercharged Fredbear's jaw, so even if Crying Child did get his head in there, which again, I guess would technically be possible, he still wouldn't have died because of it. All of this simply goes back to William's first mistake, which was choosing to kill people in his own establishment. If that first kill also wasn't his business partner's daughter, nobody would have been suspicious of him, and everything would have gone his way. Okay? Afton is smart, however he could have been a lot smarter at the start, which would have resulted in him having an easy time on his killing spree, but I guess that wouldn't make for a very interesting game series, would it? <laughs>